Hello? Hello? Hi. What's up, Glenn? What's up? Hey, man. <laughs> Taking care of animals, delivering water, room service for the goats. Wow. That's what's up. <laughs> oh, what's man. up with you? I've been doing um this. I was like uh, surfing the net, and um just looking at like at women like uh, videos of like uh, like the top powerful women in the world. And, mm-hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm so shocked, man. When you when you look at a lot of them, they look like men. <laughs> Well, they're they're working on on that problem. Yeah, some of them don't look uh, like really ugly, but like, I see, and you look at their names and, and yeah, uh, I'm just starting to see everywhere and all these positions that they're at are like positions that are powerful and controlling uh, the masses. Like uh, one was a CEO of a uh, they call it Pearson. And uh, they they basically uh, oversee all the tests that, that people take, like those standardized tests people yeah. take in school. And, uh, Gives them a lot of data. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, no. you know, you've had uh, presidents and prime ministers of countries uh, from Chile to Argentina to New Zealand to Israel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean... If if they were women, it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. But since they are not women, mm-hmm. that's the problem. Yeah, cause the because since you know what they're all about, they're basically I see them as they're there like on behalf of Neanderthal, and not even uh, probably don't even realize it, like yeah. how they they basically give to the system the same kind of control as religious people do, you know, priests and nuns who swear allegiance and obedience without question. Well, it's the same thing with these people. Yeah, man, I just... Giving control over the day-to-day activity of uh, human beings, whether it be in politics or or education or business. And I know something that's common with those uh, women, not all of them, but they all have, like, they seem to have short hair. That's like the... Yeah, well, the... They, <laughs> that's uh, when they try to be more masculine. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's, that's, that's just crazy. That's, 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 oh man. And people, you know, they they do talk about it in the media, but they just, it's totally different yeah. perspective because they don't see. Now, I mean, they, the people who run the media probably see, but they're not. <laughs> they get they put you in another direction. They have different theories. Like, oh, we're just becoming modern, and you know, women are actually demanding. Uh, men to to do the task that women would do yeah. and, and, and you, you have to you have to look at them as trojan horses yeah exactly because it's it's the same principle as neanderthalers hiding underground and running the show through secret societies the difference here is the neanderthaler is hiding inside the woman with a, a a male portion to her, uh, and the three combined together are pretending to be female. I mean, there there's no real word you can use because all words are linked to male, because all of these we men are linked to male. And and women don't grasp that concept. Real, ordinary, original women don't grasp the concept that it's not giving power to women that is occurring. 
it's giving power to priests by means of a Trojan horse. And that's scary because women could see ahead in the past, from what I understand, at least the clan mothers, because they were long term thinkers. But they can't see, like, when you see women today, they don't really seem to think far ahead like that. No, women are assigned tasks today the way men were. And men are supposed to be the long-range planners and thinkers. And yet that goes contrary to everything that was intended. It was the women who were supposed to be long-range planners. But yet instant gratification and and sovereignty and security is basically what is of interest today rather than planning for the security of the people as a whole mm. it's it's all become much more personal person wants to take care of themselves and extend it to their family uh, or their group, like uh, the control mechanism group they call RAIN, R-E-I-N. They hold the reins of power, the symbol uh, is reindeer. Because even though they hold the rain, everybody calls them deer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I see like, like my own mother, like so many, so many tasks, like it's like the almost like demanded of her. Like she. Yeah, it's totally impossible for a woman to keep up with the jobs assigned to her every day. And so women are, are we men are running things, but they're running things in a patriarchal system. Yeah. So it's like totally like warped. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, priests ran the system until they trained men to do the work and they could sit back and enjoy the benefits without doing the work. Right now, it's moved down to the next stage. You pass on the work to the women so the men can go golfing. But that's what Neanderthal did, and look what yeah. happened to him. Yeah. So these priests, then, uh, there's not going to be anything for them to do, and they're going to be uh, useless. They're not going to be exactly. needed anymore. In the end, <laughs> nobody's needed. There's no purpose for keeping them around, so the computers that run their show just uh, will say, hey, best thing we can do with you is send you off along with the uh, hermaphrodite off to another planet someplace and get you out of our hair here. Uh, So... I, I, I find it pretty hard to believe for like, everybody in this system or this world could not see that that in the end that it's it's they like they they're gonna go too. I know there has to be at least a few people who can and maybe those people were killed in the in the past. Well, in goes back to what we said when problems occurred in the past mm-hmm. there were places to go and ways to hide until the war was over or until the flood had gone by or until the uh, heat conditions of global warming had passed yeah. the problem is that the people who are inducing the problems today are making sure there will be no place to hide. 
and everyone who is uh, on the surface of the planet will be destroyed because they are individuals. And the system requires uh, complex beings, people made up of male, female, Neanderthaler. So there's no purpose for these individuals we called men or women or priests or nurses or nuns. All of these people will have served their function in the laboratories of the earth and their their task will be obsolete. So when you destroy the planet by creating a nova, there's no place for anybody to hide. If the ground melts underneath your feet, what are you going to do, dig a hole and go to the place that's hotter? <laughs> or stand on a tree that burns? Yeah. Or go up in a... Uh, in a skyscraper, when when the flood waters will rise to the twentieth floor, you know, yeah. all of these things, people are not prepared to yeah. deal with, yeah. and it's all going to happen quickly. That. Uh, it won't be a matter of I need to go to school, you know, to learn something. It'll be too late then. That's what I think about, like when I see people who look around me, like, oh, I'm, uh, I'm like they, like they, they're not successful in like uh, I don't know, a sales job or something. And it's like, oh, I'm going back to school for law, and I just think I'm like, wow, man, it's all for nothing. It, yeah. You just, <laughs> but uh, you know, I I can't tell them that because it's. They, they wouldn't, wouldn't believe you. <laughs> Until the media tells them. And the media is the cover-up society. Until they tell them, they don't believe anything. Yeah. And the media just repeats and repeats and repeats what they want people to believe. Global warming, global warming, <laughs> global warming, global warming. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's global warming. It happens every so many uh, thousand years and uh, in the past you used to dig a hole and go hide underground this time that won't be an option the so Cro-Magnon is working with Neanderthal on the ground thinking that they're destroying everything on the surface but Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal will be destroyed as well as usually the insiders are destroyed first. Yeah. So the end of, <laughs> if the end of the lives, man, that's so like they their whole thinking process is not like uh, I don't think like a human being, man. It's, it's, to think like that, like this methodically and and have no, I don't know, compassion for any other type of life except for their own. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, what makes you so cold, man? Is it really a grudge against climate? Power, power. Oh. They believe that in the end, they end up with power over slaves. And in the past, it has been true except every powerful person's turn comes up. Mm -hmm. The rise and fall of empires is what they've based their system on. And their empire's turn comes up. They are not prepared for that. They're used to handing out trouble, not dealing with it themselves. They're not even in a mode that can reflect 
upon the fact their turn has come as well. They, they, Unfortunately, we all go at the same time. You know, over over a period of time, we're all to be cleansed from the planet. The last thousand years is just like basically like the last of the last. Because so after that, it's just one third of the people of the planet at most left. After this 50-year period we're in now, that one-third has a thousand years to repeat the experiments that are still in question and in uh, reports, then they're gone too. Woe is me. And, and and it's only a matter of time before the Moho discontinuity melts, leaving only basically a quicksand world which with a hard core mantle covering the big furnace, which is the core. Then, as Alder Amin passes and and no more um, Nova is being induced, the Earth basically goes through a process of uh, regeneration. And it takes like millions of years, right? Thousands of years at least probably at least 10,000, but it may be 100,000. Then the reestablishment of the new life on Earth designed to be policemen, toll gators, tax collectors for the universe. Copper light. That's all that's needed. Keep an inventory of fossilized excrement, and you can regenerate. But when you destroy uh, everything, aren't they destroying Greenland too? All the the, yeah. So how are they going to bring back? Well, uh, all they're doing now is finding out the recipe they need. And once they have that, at the end of a thousand years, they'll have all of the classifications of we men that they need in the future, and they will store the excrement and fossilize it and and then kill off the living ones and wait and... and in order to clone from DNA, it's basically a chemical recipe that you make. Not unlike taking a seed of an oak tree and planting it in the ground, giving it access to the minerals in the ground and the water that allows those minerals to act upon the seed. And the human life is is in a laboratory able to be manufactured in the same way as they manufacture pigs or horses or sheep. I mean the the job is the same. It's just the outcome is a different animal. We are all animals here. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine that? Like, say, somebody like a person's just been bred to basically, I don't know, service a machine, and then they just take that person's DNA, make more, 
people. Yeah. <laughs> and, the key, and, and then they give them a book. <laughs> this is your instruction manual. And so this, this person, this is what you need to know. And so that this person grows up like, it just feels like that's his purpose in life to just well, fix that machine. Many people are like that today. And they don't realize. <laughs> you know, they go to work every day. You know, at General Motors and General Electric, <laughs> a whole bunch of other jobs, and and they're just like robots. Yeah. Oh, you got to see my like my father, right? He he would work. He worked every day going to downtown Manhattan, and um, working in a hospital, and then he doesn't work anymore. Something that he like lost his job, and now he just sits and does the same thing every day at home. Yeah. Like, I, I, I can't, I, when I, I look at it, I can't believe how the system just yeah. like, stole his life from him. He he doesn't know what to do with himself. Uh, He's waiting to die. Yeah. He's waiting to die. He just doesn't say it. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's the case with a lot of people. Uh, some of them can't even wait to die. As soon as they retire, they feel so lost, they die. And others, they just hang on and hang on until their turn comes up, and and they die. Wow. And I've seen that. I've seen, like, older guys that come to my job, they're like, yeah, I'm retired. All they do is just drink and just... They, I'm like, what else do you do? They're like, oh, I... I'll go, I'll play uh, poker nights, and I'm like, damn, man, you have all that free time to learn, and not, and they <laughs> they just don't know what, I guess because they've never been, uh, I don't know, discovered <laughs> that learning and stuff. Because uh, I could just imagine. For many people, learning something new means you have a responsibility <laughs> afterwards to do something. <laughs> and and they don't want the responsibility. So they don't want to learn. And they deny, deny, deny everything. Just finish out their robotic activity and die. I, I, I don't know, maybe me, because... Uh, me, I, I, it still astounds me, man. Still, I'm still like, I still get shocked sometimes. Man. Just, mm-hmm. I don't know. After all these years, man, I guess you you, you got used to it. Or? Me, I didn't get um, into the process of repetitive work. You know, I'm just seeing the people around you. All yeah. of the um, the the work that I've done in my life has been uh, things that I've initiated on my own, whether it be in in sales or or in running my own company or whatever. And I I didn't have enough time in 24 hours to do the things I wanted to do yeah. in 24 hours. <laughs> and now that I figured out that I had been a robot for the first 40, 50 years of my life, and the things that I believed I was initiating were helpful to the system, I had to change direction and say, how can I initiate things that will be helpful to reality, to survival of the species, not just being a cog in their their wheel? Yeah, and I always, I always wanted to be not a cog in the wheel. I wanted to be like a. A wrench and the like a, a pair of vice grips. Yeah, yeah, just just put a kink in this system, man. Cause yeah. I just feel like I'm, I'm I get kind of mad, man. I just what they took from me. Yeah. 
feel like they like ruined my life before I even. Well, you were born a slave, whether you know it or not. Yeah. And some people find out and and try to change. Very few. Most people find out, and deny it, and and just want you to go away if that's what you want to say. You know the the Ontario Provincial Police. I was just talking to a lady and about what they did here in fabricating a false accident out of a basic parking incident of two bumpers touching. Mm. And she says, "Well, you know, the big people at the top they know this, but the little people at the bottom don't know." I said. Hey, oh, yeah. The big people at the top aren't the ones going out doing it. <laughs> it's the little people who are sent out to do it. And are you going to tell me that a, a policeman who fabricates a false accident report on orders from someone up high doesn't know that they are, in fact, criminals, that they are manufacturing evidence? that will allow insurance companies to prosper uh, by raising insurance rates 300%, do you think those people don't share in the blame? <laughs> the big people at the top couldn't do the things they're doing if it wasn't for the fact that a whole bunch of brain-dead people at the bottom <laughs> go out and do their work for them. That's how the system works. That's how it makes me work. So, yeah. yeah, and yeah, you, you remind me. I, that's like when I was watching these videos, just watching like these politicians and like Michelle Obama. Like the things that they say, yeah. it has no substance. It's, it's just really vague, and and they always always have to use terms like the family and and then oh, I love my daughter and and. And I'm just like, and the and the and the, the people, the little people at the bottom, they just eat it all up. Yeah. I, I can't believe how they can. Just... These are people who are out planning to destroy two thirds of the people of the planet, yeah. and they assembled in a place called New Age Chicken Coop, <laughs> Copenhagen, New Age Chicken Coop, and and they come out with a statement for the poor people and the disadvantaged in the world, don't worry about a thing. We're going to set up a plan to put aside a $100 billion for you people starting in 2020. They're not telling them that between 2010 and 2020, they're going to destroy two-thirds of them. And and people are supposed to feel gratitude that Hillary Clinton says she's going to set up a fund for $200 billion after they're dead? <laughs> Her name says Hill. Hill is one word that you get out of Hillary. The other word you get is Ray. Ray, an A can be an O, alpha to omega. It comes from the word Troy. Mm. Troy is about Trojan horses. Hillary, Hill, mm -hmm. is about a jacking up of the earth from down below it's called a blind thrust if you jack up the earth below Sault Ste. Marie you empty Lake Superior on the head of everybody living in Michigan and Illinois and Ohio and, and Pennsylvania and New York and and people have no idea that the language is designed to tell them exactly what's going on 
because by telling them, they can be laughed at yeah. as it happens. Yeah. I told you, you didn't understand, you didn't believe, yeah. and and now you're paying the price. You know, so not an accident that we come from Ur, and that Ur are the two middle letters of turd. Not an accident <laughs> that every word in our language has another meaning to people who control us. Not an accident that the same words spoken to and by judges in courts of law can be used one week to find the accused guilty and the same language and same circumstances used the next week to find the person innocent, depending on what the plan has in mind. That's why English was derived from the French, the uh, Latin, and the Middle Eastern languages the masters of speak. Jesus. Yeah. And speaking of Jesus, <laughs> I, I find it funny or ironic how uh, in their religion, they say don't, you know, God does not allow drunkards in heaven, and, but yet at the same time he turns around and says, "Drink from my blood, take my wine." Yeah. <laughs> it's like do drink this. Drink of no. me. <laughs> drink of me. Yeah. Drink and become drunk off yeah. the BS, my BS. Yeah. And that's the same thing. Um. And they give him a name, which in French means. I suck. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, the, you know what? That same uh, there was another god uh, who did that, and his name is uh, Dionysus. Mm -hmm. The same type of, uh, but he was like more Dionysus. Yeah, he was more of like drunkenness and all this thing. But he, yeah, he he had every you know in the the story he had people drinking from his blood and. Dion, Zion, Zion, is a derivative of the word pion in French, which means you are a pawn. The pawn on the chessboard in French is pion, P-I-O-N. And D and P and Q and and B are interchangeable, the letters being similar in design, and all you have to do is flip and turn. So what what's the link between the word pond and pawn? Well, it's almost the same thing. Pawn and swan uh -huh. and news are basically the same word. Yeah. Or men's. You are basically being taught that you are disposable. If you don't like my news today, I'll give you a different news tomorrow. You know, that's what the media basically tells you every day. <laughs> you didn't buy what I tried to sell you yesterday? Only 78% of you now believe until there's 87 percent that believe i have to continue trying to change your opinion they're not interested in any individual thinker all they care about is the mass yeah. whereas in fact what you should be trying to do is provide information to leaders who will digest the information and come to conclusions on their own. Yeah, that's more the better strategy. 
but it's not an effective means of uh, changing the world for the better if these individuals who know act independently of each other rather than coming together and creating their own critical mass. The only way like you can get all those people to even work together is just say, hey, look, it's ultimatum. You're all dead or you're... Either you work together or you're all dead. Well, you know, if, <laughs> if, if people can understand a concept, mm-hmm. the concept is that no human being was given perfection. The max they get, can have is just under 7.7 of them is perfect. And therefore they have to assemble with 13 others who carry 7.7% perfection Mm -hmm. to gather up in the center of their circle perfection and start then willing their own will rather than individually willing their own will as seven percenters, which doesn't accomplish anything. They have to come together and manufacture that perfection by creating a circle, touching brains in the middle. What progress have you had with people who are like-minded to you? What problem that I have? What what, what progress have you had? People of like mind to you. I I still didn't hear what you said. I said, what what progress have you had? Progress, progress. Oh, that's the word I was missing. Uh, I'll never know. At the end, there will be the numbers. But I'll never be able to be the judge of who is telling the truth and who is lying. It's um, it's a little bit like uh, I say to people, there is knowledge here that uh, you can get from me, and I'm prepared to give you a week of my time for $2,000. Many people will call me up and say, uh, I'd like to go and spend a week, but I don't have $2,000. Say, okay, how about $500 and a month's work? Yeah, that sounds much better. And and then when they get here, uh, I can basically see that they could have spent $2,000 easily, but they lied. And I don't act upon that. I simply note it as a fact. When it comes time for creation to listen to the people who claim to be willing their will, creation will know that these people are liars. And what I presented to them was an opportunity to tell the truth, and they chose instead to lie. Their word will be worth nothing. And on the other hand, there are people who are going to call me up and say, I have no money, but I want to come and I want to help. And whatever it takes, cleaning the barn, cleaning whatever, I'm prepared to do. And those people come, and sure enough, they have no money. They're willing to work. 
And creation will know that as well. And their input into the critical mass will be valuable, whereas the liars will just talk, but creation will disregard. My job is basically that of a filter. That's why I present the story in a way that forces people who really care to work at it. Obviously, from uh, the fact that you do this almost every day, you work at it. Other people want me to do all the work and hand it to them on a platter. I'm not going to do that. Because part of the filter is to find out who's really out there that cares. Mm -hmm. Who out there just cares for themselves. Yeah, I get kind of... I get kind of... Um... A little irritated when people, because I, you know, I put this stuff on a blog, on my blog. Like, I say, okay, look, just listen to like what Glenn's saying and try to like understand this whole story. Like, just watch videos and and then I put so many like allegories and, and, and name so many movies, and then they'll tell me. Show me an allegory or show me, explain, break it down for me. I'm like, I just showed you so much. You know, you know I guess. I don't know. But that's the filter. <laughs> you know, that automatically is, is what you intend to gain is those people who don't want to do anything. Yeah. And then they call Point me. themselves out. Yeah, they do. And then they call me. Like, I'm arrogant or something. I'm supposed yeah. to be like I'm. Well, that's that's <laughs> the burden that a teacher has to carry. Yeah. It's uh, rejection by those people who want everything handed to them on a silver platter. Uh, to me, is is uh, a benefit rather than a problem is good. Those people won't be in the way anymore. <laughs> yeah, but then there are people, you know, I, and I do come across these people who I can tell they, they can understand, understand. Yeah. And they just, you know, they're just going about in their lives. Everybody gets three strikes. They make attempts at hitting home runs. Where did that concept come from, three strikes? It comes from the fact that um, in the secret societies, they use a symbol of three wavy lines, one on top of the other. Uh -huh. I think that looks like, looks like water or something. Or? Yeah. Three wavy lines. If you look at, uh, I did a posting this past week, I think, on uh, the uh, Copenhagen... Uh, factory that, that makes uh, porcelain. Yeah. And they sign their porcelain with three wavy lines. Oh. And what they were doing was making uh, eggs on a nest for the Queen of Russia, the Tsar's wife, whatever they call it. The 
symbolism of that is three strikes. Three floods in your life. How do you deal with them? In the end, the person, the perfect slave, is three and one. Mm. That's pretty... um a while ago, I, I thought it was pretty <laughs> surprising how um, cause you would be talking about three and one, but thousands of years ago they were talking about three and one. Yeah. And do. <laughs> it's been going on for forty-two thousand years. Mm. So it's about time people caught on. So what's the difference between um? Like I don't know, people like Nefertiti or something, and in, in, uh, Hillary Clinton today. The difference was Nefertiti uh, was the granddaughter, uh, if you consider being made in a lab mm-hmm. possible to be described as a family, uh, but. Uh, She was fabricating women, six daughters. Those daughters would go out to create five groups of people, and one would die young, and her DNA would be used the second time to make the most perfect slave. All of that is is symbolic of, at the end, so-called perfect structure will be called a 10. And then there will be an improvement on the 10 that will be an 11, and a 12, and a 13, and a 14. The ultimate ultimate that will come back after the final destruction of the planet and will be remade for travel throughout the universe will be a number 15. That is equivalent to a number 6. Symbol symbol of 6 is like a a circle that comes out and goes up yeah. into space. And they say, yeah, they do say that in the explanation, like the odd numbers are like perfection, like a perfect, like them better. Than, than and they always have to make perfect numbers out of two numbers. So they can never talk about number six, for example, because that was us, Mm -hmm. the next group, the equivalent of a number six, is a 15. That's the new structure. So the numbers between 10 and 14 Mm -hmm. are basically um, improvements on the perfect structure as they work their way down to the last day. So 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 is the five that live. Then everybody dies, but the one that's missing, because she had six daughters, the one that is missing was remanufactured from coprolite as a new person. In the story of Akhenaten, the remanufactured woman, girl, is Becky Naughton. Becky Naughton. Yeah. It was the second daughter of Nefertiti 
that died, and her name was very similar. I forget exactly what it was, uh, but similar, and it got modified down to Becky. Not she, in fact, gave birth to the two boys. Two boys were Smen Carey and Tutankhamun. Now the the five other girls went off and are basically the what royal families call bloodlines. Linked back to that original happening in the 18th dynasty. They still practice that, like marrying and, and bloodline? I would suggest that every royal family mm-hmm. has. Um, a task to do, and that's to integrate into their family individuals that were made in a lab. Oh, keep that up. So they themselves give um, what they call birth to the blood, but they adopt into their family someone born from the crypt. The same thing now happens in democratic societies. Many of the high-ranking Masons, uh, in whatever task they have, whether it be politician or police or whatever, uh, entertainers are told that they have to adopt person of a different race, whether it be um, adopting um, what we call native people, Uh or as um, Madonna has done, gone to Africa, the other one there that's with the UN. Oh, I think Jolie. Yeah. Yeah. Jolie. Is he... Angelina Jolie. Angel, mm-hmm. and she's adopting somebody that has O.I. in there. Mm-hmm. Since O.I. and O.Y. is the same thing, mm-hmm. and an L for left can be traded for an R for right, yeah. you're dealing again with Roy. D at the front, J is really a D, uh, because you put two together. Uh, D can be uh, DDT, changed for a T. The word, again, is Troy. Destroy. Destroy is a demon. Demon. That's a... Long time words. Yeah, they really did it because when you I'm like after I read that story, Desdemona. Yeah. What he accused Desdemona of doing is actually what women do on a daily basis today. Mhm. So they're Desdemona. So. They're not women doing it. They are we men. Yeah. yeah. We men. That's the the hard part for everybody to get adjusted to. I mean, I call, you know, I see it all like oh, we're but we men, you know, I I see that. But there are also the opposite. There are women who reside within men. 
that's that's why you have gays and lesbians and and transgender people. Um, it's just that they didn't win out on the uh, project to make a perfect slave. They were all attempts. Gays, lesbian, transgender were the original three attempts. And, and the final winner in that competition is we men. But you also should be pronouncing the word men as min, we men, hmm. because they come from bra men. In just minutes. Yeah. In any event, <laughs> it's time for me to finish off my work for tomorrow. Yeah. Well, today I was shoveling the snow like crazy, man. It was pretty deep. Good exercise. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right, Glenn. Keep it up. Okay, I will. Okay, what?